All right, welcome everyone. This is Rajneesh Gupta, and I'm with I'm with Jamin Patak. This is our mock interview series. Uh, so uh, I guess you are already familiar with the process. Jamin will be the interviewer, and I'll be the candidate. Uh, before we go ahead, make sure you subscribe the channel. If you are an existing subscriber, make sure you press the bell icon so that you get notified quickly. All right. So without taking much time, let's get started. Hi, Jamin. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Rajnish? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me here. Yeah. So my today's question are on Windows Defender. Have you ever worked with Windows Defender? Yeah, I, I worked with it. Yes. So tell me your experience working with Windows Defender. So yes, I mean, I worked in uh, deploying uh, configuring Windows Defender for Endpoint and uh, also worked in onboarding agents using MSI scripts uh, so that we can push it through the Active Directory and uh, also worked in addressing different vulnerabilities on Windows Defender, uh, you know, at looking at those vulnerabilities, looking at recommendation related to updating the .NET framework or uh, update uh, updating vulnerabilities related to OpenSSL and remediating those vulnerabilities as well. And uh, also worked in uh, uh, looking at different alerts, uh, different kind of alerts related to suspicious remote activities or sensitive credentials, memory, uh, memory read, I guess, and uh, maybe suspicious file uh, registered on the endpoint. And then you know, uh, then classifying the alert as true alert or a false alert, working and creating suppressed rule for either on the device or in the organization level as well. And uh, then, then also using the submission uh, feature where we can really submit the samples for analysis. The sample could be email, sample could be the URL or email attachment. Uh, I also worked in uh, doing, uh, you know, uh, not really advanced hunting, but yeah, I mean, uh, medium level of hunting where hunting where I, I worked in running queries on Defender using different schemas such as maybe uh, attack techniques, uh, folder path, detection sources, uh, account domain. So yeah, pretty good with that. Even worked in managing the configuration, managing the licenses uh you know looking at all the assets on the windows defender as well so yeah that that's what uh, i uh, my experience have been yeah okay good tell me different methods to onboard windows 10 machine uh well uh as per their their configuration uh you know on windows defender for endpoint we have options like local script but that can only work for 10 devices. Uh, we can we can use the local script only for the 10 devices. Uh, uh, that that's as per the current uh, current uh, you know settings. Uh, we also have an option for group policies. We can also do it through the uh, configuration manager, the Microsoft Endpoint configuration manager. We can do it with MDM or maybe Microsoft Intune or uh, yeah, so these are some of the popular and common one, but I think there is VDI of onboarding script as well for any uh, non-persistent device, devices. Sorry. So these are these are the op op options I know, and uh, around three of them I've tried personally. I've tried local scripts. I've tried with the uh, group policies. I've even used the Microsoft Intune for pushing up those uh, pushing those scripts. Yeah. Okay, got it. Then how you are going to verify if the device is properly onboarded and reporting to the service? So basically, when when we uh, when we log into our Defender dashboard, uh, mm -hmm. we can verify from the endpoint itself. You know, we we can see all the devices if they that has been connected. Or second thing, we can go into the in in the setting tab where we also have an uh, have the detection script. Uh, in order to verify, in order to verify if it's reporting the services or not, we can use the detection script. We can run on the command prompt of the Windows itself on the Windows machine, and if 
if it is successful, the detection script will be marked as completed, and a new alert will be will get appeared in probably a few seconds. Sometimes it may may take few minutes as well, but that's that's a way we can verify. So yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, got it. Yeah, Rajesh, uh, this is all I have for today. <clears throat> all right. So thank you so much, Jamin. Thank you so much. You're so. Um, all right, so uh, everyone, um, this is the this was the a quick interview uh, mock interview, and uh, you know uh, it's time for a detailed explanation on Windows Defender. Let me share my screen, and I'll show you the live Windows Defender experience for you. Okay, this is how the Windows Defender for Endpoint really looks like. On the top, you have your incidents. Uh, we have alerts, and we have hunting option as well, threat hunting, where you can run some custom scripts. So you can add scripts related to, uh, you know, timestamp. So it will be taken here, and uh, you know, you also have an option of submission. So if let's say you want to submit some malicious uh, file or email attachment URL, you can do it from here. So you can go to email section. Uh, you can select the submission type. Maybe it's email URL or email attachment. Then you can say. Then you can specify uh, how how exactly you want this to be get it, get uh, you know classified or categorized. You can specify it, and you know you will get the results. Um, next, uh, you have. A couple of other options as well. You also have threat intelligence options. You can look at a different intel profiles. This is the threat analytics. Uh, you can look uh, look at different intel profiles. Uh, you can look at uh, you know different intel projects as well. And uh, other than that, there is the most important thing is the uh, I'm I'm saying this is something with which where you spend a lot of time which is vulnerability management. So you can go into the vulnerability management dashboard. This is where you will find all the vulnerabilities of your networks. You can currently see you have, uh, these are the topmost vulnerabilities in your system. And then you can look at it, uh, like uh, update Oracle VM virtual box and all this different, uh, you know, uh, recommendation. You can see these are all recommendations. These are not critical vulnerabilities. And then you can work in uh, remediating them, okay? You can also look at the inventories. Inventory is like the database of all the softwares, modules, and packages and in the system. Um, next, we also have an option of reports. Uh, you can get the reports of all the incidents, alerts. You know, you can see the reports. You can you can uh, export reports related to security, query response, threat protection. Uh, monthly summary, security summary, vulnerable devices, device health, firewall, device control, email, everything. You can also have a quick glance over the overall system health or the service health as well. You can also specify the permission for uh, different you know services into the network and users as well. So you can make sure who can access what. So it's a role-based access control. If you want to look at the configuration or onboard system, you can go to the endpoint. In the setting, you have the endpoints. And then from here, you can go to the device management and you have onboarding and offboarding. So you can go to the onboarding tab and from here, you can select your endpoint. Maybe let's say you want to install or onboard Windows Server, you can go to the Windows Servers and you will get a you know a script accordingly. You can see this is the detection test. Uh, if you remember, this was this was Jamin's questions as well. So you, we can use this uh, detection script to verify if our um, you know if it has been if our endpoint has been onboarded properly or not. Okay, uh, we can even onboard uh, Windows 10 and Windows 11 as well. And you can see these are all different methods we can onboard endpoints. So we have local script, group policy, endpoints. MDM solutions. You can download the uh, onboarding package, and then this can act. This can be your detection test. Then, okay. Uh, 
you also have multiple options for alert separation uh, so you can even create separation rules it could be on the device level or maybe in the group level you can also look at different indicators so these are like in the iocs uh, for file hashes uh, i mean not ioc every time it could be observable as well so url domain ip address file hashes certificates then you also have an option for web content filtering uh, of course for this for this organization use firewalls and uh, their uh, web filtering features url filtering features or proxy solutions as well like zscaler or blue code proxy but you can even create some policies over here as well although it's it, it's not going to be that complex or advanced capability but it's it's there okay then you have automation upload uh, feature and asset rule management feature. You have permission, device group, licenses, advanced features. These are general rules. Okay, so don't worry about it. These are all general features related to license, advanced feature, uh, enforcement scope, Intune permission, Intune. If you have Intune in your network, this could be very helpful on those situations. All right. So, all right. So this is just a quick tour of uh, Microsoft uh, Defender for Endpoint solution. Let me know if you have any question in your mind. I would love to answer that. This is me, uh, Rajneesh Gupta with Jamin Patak. Bye for now.